Welcome everybody. Okay, now this is now all the nitty gritty part of the, uh, the night as far as the track's concerned. A couple of things um, I'll mention just before I go into just the sections of track is that a lot of you are going to become very familiar with these little um, tree markers. Um, you'll see two different types out there. You'll see a reflective type, like so, which will generally be placed out where most of you will be traversing the track during the night um, with your head torches and with your pupils about the size of 20 cent pieces. Those reflective um, panels do stand out quite clearly. There's also going to be during the night uh, glow sticks placed around the track. And you'll also see other markers like this that don't have those reflective patches. You should see these about every 100 metres around the track. If you don't see a marker for at least, say, 300 metres, very good chance you've missed a turn. Um, and turns are signposted um, quite clearly. But if you haven't seen one of these for at least 300 metres, suggest you do backtrack. Um, go back to where you believe the last marker is or find the last marker, and then have a look around and see whether you have um, taken a um, minor track off to the left or right, but they are placed, there's uh, about 1,400 of these out on the track, so they're very, very um, easy to find and uh, quite regular. Now, in relation to the, um, the track, you will find that my recommendation to you is you don't look at it as a 96k course, but um, look at it checkpoint by checkpoint. Um, you find that if you try and digest it as a 96k track that um, it'll almost seem insurmountable. But if you just go section by section, you will find that, um, that it takes that um, normality um, out of the equation. Okay, um, now most of you I'm sure have walked at least a good portion of the track. There are some sections of the track which are private property and we do thank you for um, not walking in those areas, uh, the farmland up around Beachmont, uh, the areas around Calabria Bar and some of the areas that are around the um, Austinville area. So uh, thank you for your assistance there. There are two um, starting points, as Adam mentioned. We do have the start at Firth Park at Mudrabar for the 96K events. And of course, we have the starts of the 40K, 48K events over here at Numbum Bar. Um, first section of the track, which many of you um, probably are not familiar with, is from Firth Park, down Hardy's Road, up Wallaby Drive into Baraka Court, 5.4 k's. Um, you will find that at all the checkpoints we do supply water. We do ask that you also, if you can, with your support teams, do supply water as well. If you can carry a couple of those 10 litre tubs around, just sort of supplements our supplies. Um, our water is supplied by the Spring Waterman, um, a very, very uh, long term um, supporter of the event. But um, if you can help supplement um, our sort of water that we supply out there, that will uh, come in handy. All checkpoints have toilet facilities. Um, would appreciate that you spend the time, not only support crew, but also competitors, to look at um, the website, um, support crew handbooks and competitor handbooks. And in particular, take note of the Bush, Bushwalkers Code of Conduct and where possible, please use the facilities that we we have out there for you, um, and uh, you will find that uh, toilets, etc., are at each of the checkpoints. From checkpoint one, you then get into uh, the, the bush proper, and uh, that section two goes from Baraka Court in Mudraba, and you end up at uh, Mount Nimble, um, Mount Nimble Campgrounds. Um, with the timing for the event, Checkpoint 1 will have a timing system there, but you will not be actually swiped at Checkpoint 1. Um, just due to the mass of people coming through that checkpoint, it's not practical, it slows too many people down. So purely a safety checkpoint. If you happen to, for some reason, not prepared and you actually withdraw at Checkpoint 1, um, then you can go through the normal withdrawal processes and fill out the uh, withdrawal form. 
and um, and then we enter that data into our our, our KML tracking system. Um, there's timing, of course, at checkpoint two, toilet facilities, water, um, and of course, 12k in at that stage. Next section is from, and most of us have probably experienced this section, in particular, the famous Mudgee Hill, first sort of 40 odd degree hill that you sort of hit, and if you haven't been there yet, you will certainly um, be in for a surprise um, on the event day. Um, please keep in mind along here, if you happen to be doing any training during the day, that's not too bad, but we strictly ask that you do not do not night train on Tallowood Road. Um, respect the residents in the areas that you do train. Um, they might have a sleep in on Sunday morning, even though most of us training don't. But um, please, um, if you are training, do respect not only in Tallowood Road, but in all the areas where you pass through residential areas, that you do respect the residents there. Without their support, of course, this event wouldn't be able to happen. So we do, uh, do ask you to keep that in mind. The section um, three is from, as I mentioned, Mount Nimble uh, Lodge, and you go along Tellerwood uh, Ridge, down into um, Austinville Road, down there Moffat's Crossing, and of course to the end of Austinville Road. At that stage there, you're at the uh, 20K mark. Uh, again, toilet facilities, it is a timing checkpoint. It's not a live timing checkpoint, purely because there's no reception there. If you try and contact um, your support crew, there will be some difficulty. That's checkpoint if you do need to uh, um, contact your support crew. Um, that um, communication will be through two-way radios. We do have two-way radio communication there. The next section is from um, the end of Austinville Road to Polly's Kitchen, checkpoint four. Um, now, there is obviously um, your first major support crew checkpoint here for the 96k event, 29k's in, toilet facilities there. We will be um, putting timing restrictions on checkpoint 4. At the top of Mount Fairview, um, which is the steep climb out of Austinville Road, there will be a sign there. At that point there, you're 9 kilometres from Polly's Kitchen on checkpoint 4. We do ask, and there will be a sign reminding you to do so, that you make contact with your support crew and let them know that you're there so that they can then make their way out to checkpoint four and set up for your arrival. We do not want you to go from Firth Park starting location out to checkpoint four and set up for a day uh, of camping. We, um, this, the, the area there is, is limited for the event um, and if we have everyone lob up there in one hit, then we won't be able to accommodate everyone. So if you can communicate with your support crews, let them know that you're, and you should be able to get an indication of how far you're out from your training and what your pace is, but you're looking at nine kilometers from the top of Mount Fairview to checkpoint four. The reason why we have this um, notification set up is because you'll be given two hours to support your crew at checkpoint four. Um, it will be monitored and after two hours um, you will be asked to move on um, and also as um, Adam mentioned, please number the bay goes, if you're putting a, um, a vehicle there, place your gazebo at the back of the vehicle and not to the side. You are allocated one um, car spot per team with checkpoint four. Uh, toilet facilities there, timing is at that checkpoint. After you leave checkpoint four, you head up over Pages Pinnacle from um, Narrowwood over to Numbar, um, to the Numbar Environmental Centre. A lot of you obviously have done that as it's part of the training course. Um, you will find that if you happen to miss the toilets at checkpoint four, there's some public facilities here. Uh, nothing flash, but they are uh, public facilities. And there is also facilities, toilet facilities, over at checkpoint um, five over here. And you will find also that there is timing at checkpoint five as well. Um, just one thing about timing at checkpoint, um, oh, actually, I'll come to checkpoint seven in due course. Um, from checkpoint five, you then move on to checkpoint six, which is the half, approximate halfway mark. One thing we do ask when you do cross and it's in your training notes, the six creek crossings here, that you do not go and bank, walk up the bank, try and find a dry crossing 
and do damage to the environment. We ask that you, when you cross these crossings, that you cross the actual fire roads that um, are clearly identifiable. Don't creek hop or rock hop up to the left or the right of the banks. Um, the Kokoda kids have been doing some revegetation work out there and weed maintenance and so forth. They've spent a lot of resources and time out there and we certainly don't want all that effort and, and uh, work that they've done to go to waste by uh, people trampling or introducing weeds up those, um, those areas to the left and right of the crossings. Um, one suggestion in relation to the creek crossings and, and saving your shoes from getting wet, Back in 2008, 9 and 10 when, and 11 when I did the, the challenge, I used reef shoes, those shoes that you can buy for about seven or eight dollars from um, Kmart Target. They're, they're just a wetsuit type rubber soled shoe. We put them on at the first creek crossing, did the six creek crossings, it's only about a 3k section. Um, didn't matter if I walked in the wet feet for three k's, didn't do a great deal of harm. Got down to, you know you've done the actual crossings because just down here, you'll go through a gate and at that point there we just sat down, took the reef shoes off, put our nice dry socks and shoes on. The reef shoes only weigh about probably 200 grams, put them back in the backpack and off we went. Um, so that's just a, something to throw out there for you. Then you go on to Chester's Road along the Head back to uh, checkpoint seven, the environmental centre. No crossings there. We will be closing off the um, closing off the road for the start of that event. So we will be going along the road just at that start of the 48 um, k events. So you head if you're doing the 96 along a footpath onto Chester's Road, up onto the ridge, down into checkpoint seven. Again, taller facilities. Timing there. Um, one thing about checkpoint 7 in relation to the 48k events, you will not be timed after you start there, you will not be timed there again as it's going to be about 1200 people hitting that timing section pretty much all at once, it's only about 7k's in. So if you're in the 48k events, do not stop there to be timed. You can stop them obviously if you're withdrawing, I didn't expect you to do that after 7k's. Um, there will be again toilet facilities there and also water. From there you head up to Beachmont. Um, most of you, have, if you've trained in this area, have gone up to the gate at the top of the SEQ waterland there. Um, thank you again for not going into the private property. Then you have another major checkpoint here. Um, of course, as we mentioned earlier on, checkpoint six, which is number bar, is also a major checkpoint. We have checkpoint um, Eight up here, which is another uh, support crew checkpoint. Uh, we will have toilet facilities there. Um, timing once again, that's going to be the first timing point for the 48k competitors, and will be a timing point for the 96k competitors as well. Um, next section, and before I go any further, can everyone tell me what these are? Do we know what they're used for? Because for some strange reason, 700 metres past those 12 toilets up at checkpoint A was the first bush toileting that wasn't disposed of. And there was another 60 to 70 that Adam and I had to pick up within the army land. Um, so if you do bush toilet, one of two things, bury it with one of those or take it out. But please, if you do bush toilet, look at the book, uh, Bushwalker's Code of Etiquette and dispose of it accordingly. Wasn't a nice job. Um, next section, of course, is from checkpoint eight through to checkpoint nine down in the army land. Um, again, toilet facilities here. There's going to be about 14 or so toilets there. There's also another um, eight toilets down in checkpoint nine. We also are placing another single toilet down here if you do get caught out, um, about two k's down from checkpoint um, eight, but it will only be one. So um, please, if you do need to go to the toilet, please use the facilities there or there, as there'll only be one there. Timing here, there hasn't usually been timing in the past, so we've got timing at checkpoint eight and checkpoint nine. Then after you leave checkpoint nine, you head up Armitage Road. At the end of Armitage Road, there's quite a steep climb up this 
um, up this ridge here, up to Beachmont, to the Tarlington Steps, and then you have checkpoint 10. A again, um, timing at checkpoint 9, timing at checkpoint 10, toilet facilities at both, as I mentioned. Um, when you come up from the army land to these Tarlington steps, there's some steps just here that you'll encounter. There's again residents here and residents just before you go up into Sid Duncan Park. So again, if you're there during the night, please um, be mindful not to be too loud. Um, they, they obviously, at that stage, most of you are probably going through there late, late Saturday night, early early hours of Sunday morning and um, there are people that are wanting to get some sleep so please just um, be mindful of that. After you leave checkpoint 10 you then head along the top of Freeman's Road to Hellfire Pass. Again we have some residences just around here and also just up around um, Hellfire Pass and um, most of us know um, a particular residence up there which I call Fred Flintstone House. It's quite unusual if you haven't seen it you will experience it so it's um, certainly different. Once you go on to Hellfire Pass, if you want to be loud, you can be as loud as you want down in here. You're in state forest, so, uh, or council land, it's council forest, so feel free to, to have a good old chat down there. Um, we will have a marshalling point here just to encourage people to be a little quiet around uh, the properties. Checkpoint 11, Calagra Bar um, Fire Station or Reserve, that's a major support crew checkpoint. Um, again, toilet facilities, timing down there. Um, and um, the scouts, no, the Frugal Fry Brigade will be putting on food down there such as um, egg and bacon muffins, uh, sausages, uh, refreshments and things like that. So if you are uh, going out there, uh, don't forget to take some money with you and support those uh, wonderful people out at Calag by Rural Fire Brigade and of course uh, the scouts will be out there, the regional Gold Coast region scouts will be out there as well, um, running the, uh, the checkpoint uh, parking and amenities, so uh, support them as well um, whilst you're um, in that checkpoint or support crew location. From there you go um, up into Mount Nathan um, and you end up going down through um, the Mount Nathan, Nathan, uh, Nathan Valley Road area. Um, we again have some residences down here um, that you a service road, but um, basically the, the property is back onto the service road on both sides. So please be mindful of the, the residences in the, the area there. Um, also up through Crystal Springs Court, there's properties there as well. Uh, once you actually head up into the State Forest, you're back into the bush again at Narang State Forest. Um, you will find uh, checkpoint 12 it has limited facilities, but also a timing checkpoint as checkpoint 11 was. Um, again, water at those checkpoints. Um, from there, checkpoint 12, you are now getting into the Rank State Forest proper, um, up onto the, uh, the last sort of couple of sections of the course. Um, there will be, as I said, limited toilets there. Up to checkpoint 13, that's your last checkpoint, 91.6 k's in. Um, again, last year there wasn't timing there. There is timing again this year. Um, so um, do scan through there as well, as with all the checkpoints. From checkpoint 13, if you've at checkpoint 13, you've nailed it, believe me, because you're that close. Um, you're looking at uh, it only being about 5 k's, or just, um, just, under, just under 5 k's. Um, you will find that uh, when you start coming down off the, off the... Sorry, Steve. When you start coming down off the ridge and heading down towards the velodrome, you'll start hearing all the, all the crowds down there cheering the other competitors coming over the line. So it's a really amazing feeling. And you've, you've really nailed it when you've got to this section here. Um, as I mentioned just earlier, just to close off on the, um, the support crew checkpoints, a lot of them um, are run by um, a lot of different organisations or, or clubs around the coast. We've got Checkpoint 4 that's being managed by the, um, the Redbacks Junior Rugby League Club. Um, they're running the, the car parking at Checkpoint 4. Again, gold coin donations. If you can support these people that are supporting the community, we really would appreciate it. Same at Checkpoint um, 6 out at Numbar. 
Um, Melbourne Bar community has been very, very kind to the Kokoda Challenge over the over the years. Um, so um, we do ask um, with checkpoint four, a uh, checkpoint six, that um, you support the community with a, if you can afford it, a five dollar donation just for the car parking and facilities that they put on there. And of course, checkpoint eight, we've got the scenic rim SES that look after that. Again, another um, fantastic community organisation that, uh, that help us out um, when times are tough. And if you can help them out um, with, a, again, a gold coin donation of, of a sort, that would be wonderful. And again, at checkpoint 11 as well. That's me done.